everybody adam flowers here it's mob vlog and uh today we are going to be talking about the chicago outfit because that's what we always talk about on this channel the chicago outfit we may stray from time to time subject to subject but today's specifically the stardust's connection to las vegas the guys who are running it and five of them that were indicted so we're gonna go through that and uh welcome back guys it's mob oh by the way it is the 11th of January. This is 2023's first broadcast. Welcome back, guys. Hey, Red, how's it going today? It's going good. Awesome. Well, cheers to Red in this day. Thank you, sir. <laughs> it, is, um, it is that day. And... Uh, Red, today we're going to be talking about the skim, the skim that was going on at the uh, Stardust, and the guys who went to um, went to uh, 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 court and were indicted, were charged for it, and actually came under indictment. Some of them pled guilty, but some of them were indicted. So there were, uh, there were a lot of them that pled guilty, a lot of them. Yeah. So they are. Um, hmm. Interesting. So I pulled up the article and I was, <laughs> I have it underneath. Um, and hello to everybody who's coming in. Don Chichio, I saw you in the comments. Big Mo, Happy New Year. William Kirchmayer, uh, it's good to see you. Street Stories, Roll Tide, Jim Yeager, Frank Ferraro, uh, all of you. It is uh, great to have you with us today. And um, it's great to have you with us today. I'm getting this article up in front of me for a second here, Red. Um, oh, they moved it on me. Okay. Can you believe it? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to have to take this out again. Wow. See, this is why sometimes we start two minutes late, but hey, whatever. We're here. We'll find it. We'll get it pulled up. Bobby Bag of Donuts is in the house. Benedict Mastriani. Benedict. Eggs Benedict's my favorite breakfast. Did I ever tell you that, Red? Yeah, mine too. <laughs> yeah, I, I love Eggs Benedict. You know what else I like? Windy I'll City try. Beef. Windy City Beefs and Dogs. Yeah. Windy City oh. Beefs and Pizza. They have that here in town, too. I was just there. A couple of the prescribers came on the tour. We did the brand new crime tour, uh, Sonny Zaro. That's Sonny in the middle. That's me on the right, if you guys don't recognize me. And, and then that's Scott H. on the left. That's us in front of the Windy City Beefs. I know I'm making Red jealous right now, saying Italian beef. and Red's going on. <laughs> Making my mouth water. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, so, so, um, so what's new, Red? We have people asking, several people asking about cups with your face on it. Well, that's funny. Nobody wants a mug with my mug, okay? <laughs> I think they're asking for it. All right, so. We got the article, five figures, um, mob figures, guilty in Vegas skimming case. Well, my buddy Art Kelly was in town. Did I tell you that, Red? We went down to the mob no. museum this last, yeah, this last weekend. We went down to the mob museum. He came in town to watch some college football, which, I mean, football is great and everything. I'm just not a, I'm, I don't follow it. But we went, down the, <laughs> yeah, we went down to the mob museum, walked through it, checked it out. It's still very cool, as always. Uh, and uh, then we had lunch at the Pepper Mill. Damn, Pepper Mill. I love it. <laughs> I Frank, know that you was Frank Colada's favorite places to go to. You guys come to town, you guys got to do the Pepper Mill. It is uh, a lot of fun. It's the atmosphere you go there for. And the food. <laughs> Food's terrific. 
Okay, so let's start to go through this. Uh, this is from the Los Angeles Times, January 22nd, 1986. From a time That's standpoint. What happened. What's this? That's when it happened. Joey Lombardo was in prison then. Okay, let's go through it. Reputed Chicago Mafia boss Joseph Iupa and four other alleged mobsters were convicted Tuesday by a federal judge in Kansas City of skimming profits while secretly controlling the Stardust and Fremont casinos in Las Vegas with the Teamsters U Union pension fund money in the 1970s. So <clears throat> they got the Teamsters pension fund loan for the Argent Corporation. Right? Yeah. Yes. Argent. Alan Glick. Yes. Okay. He testified also. Why didn't they? I wonder why they didn't mention. They mentioned the Stardust and the Fremont. Why didn't they mention the Marina and the Hacienda? Because they didn't catch any of the skim coming out of there. They caught it out coming out of Whoa, the Stardust. They couldn't, they couldn't they, prove they, those. And they only nailed them for like $2 million And okay. God knows they probably did $2 billion over the years. I mean, there was... I don't know how much, 200 million. Yeah, when, when we get to the you know, when we get to the numbers in this, you're gonna read the numbers and go, wait, wait, wait. There's no way it was that little. There's there had to have been more. Uh all right. Carrying on. The case involves a major scandal in America's gambling capital, where state authorities have never brought a major criminal case based on skimming and hidden ownership. US Strike Force prosecutor David B. B. Helfrey called the guilty findings a significant victory that proved, quote, beyond the doubt, that concert, the concerted workings of the Chicago, Cleveland, Milwaukee, and Kansas City crime families and their hold on former Teamsters and Las Vegas casino officials. Okay. And Joey was already in prison for Pendorf. You know, okay, um, well which was, uh, so they I knew see Roy it. Williams was that way. Okay, I see him coming up in the article. Judge Joseph E. Stevens Jr., who had not allowed the use of the word mafia to be named in testimony, congratulated the jury. <laughs> why can't he say, why wouldn't you want that? The, anyways, he said, quote, your decisions are courageous ones. He said, I believe you will come to conclude that this is an important case that you have played in an important part to resolve i know they didn't say they let him say mafia because they didn't want the jurors intimidated that this was right right, right. Crime, right? well and if that's a pre-trial motion that was a pre-trial pre motion where they said uh oh you can't you can't say that because it's going to prejudice the jury let's just go on the facts of the case which, which side which side would have filed that the defense the prosecutors the prosecutors no, the defense no the, the defense, defense. I would think it'd be more likely that if they said the word mafia, that the jurors wouldn't want to say that the guys were guilty. You know what I mean? Wouldn't they be intimidated that it's it's the mafia that's that they're trying? And if they put the no. mafia in jail, they're going to get... No? No. They just didn't want it being said. Okay. All right. So they just didn't want it being said. Because... Right. All right. We have that's some a... businessmen here. And... They're going on trial. They're mm -hmm. businessmen. They've invested okay. in this company. All right. Convicted with the 77-year-old Iupa on charges of conspiracy and related charges were Milton J. Rockman, 73, of Cleveland, and Chicagoans John Cerrone, 71, Angelo LaPietra, and La Joseph... Pietra. Yeah, I always screw that one up. Oh. <laughs> if you're not from Chicago, it's easy to do. Francie Brady, that butcher boy. Where? All right, La, La Piatra, <laughs> 60 years old, and Joseph Lombardo, 57. So they, um, so they were convicted. Each defendant was convicted on eight counts, with each count carrying a maximum penalty of five years in prison and a $10,000 fine. The jury deliberated about 30 hours over a period of six days. Attorneys for Rockman and Cerrone immediately said they would appeal the convictions. Which they did. Four others pled guilty. 
four other defendants pled guilty before the four-month trial began. They included reputed Kansas City Mafia head Carl Sevilla. Two other brother, uh, two others ple uh, pleaded guilty during the trial, including reputed Milwaukee Mafia chief Frank Ballesteri. Right. That happens a lot of times. I've watched it happen. In the middle of the trial, they'll just throw in the rag. They don't want to talk anymore, period. <laughs> they saw their evidence. That's it. That's also who they caught on a wiretap that they think might have bombed a, a Lefty Rosenthal's car. Right, talking to yeah, his son. Like Gary Jenkins is more inclined to believe it was Savella, and I believe right. so, too. Yeah. Agosto, no, I, I, Agosto, what's his name? I can't pronounce that correctly. Um, Agosto? Oh, was Joe Augusto. Name? Right, yes. Joe Augusto from the Tropicana, who was yes. moving the money to Kansas City or was running things at the Trop. Yeah. He was an entertainment director over there. You know why they did that, that entertainment director title, Red? No. Gaming Commission, had, a gaming commission had rules, and the Nevada Gaming Commission said, you can work in a casino, but if you have ties to organized crime in some which way, you can't. You can't work in a casino unless you're an entertainer because people like Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, all they did was worked in mobbed up places. So they knew these guys. So they were. And, yeah. And they were mobbed up themselves. So it was, it was a way, it was a, a workaround for them. Um, from what I understand anyway, two additional defendants, lawyer, sons of Ballesteri, Joseph P 45 and John, 37 won dismissal from Judge Stevens after the government finished presenting evidence. Another defendant, Anthony Spilatro, the Chicago, Chicago group's alleged overseer in Las Vegas, is to be tried later. And I would believe that it would have been um, Oscar Goodman that would have come in with the pretrial motion to say, we don't want mafia mentioned here. <laughs> Maybe. I didn't, I didn't see his name in this article that he was one of the... Oh, he, he worked on the pretrial motion oh, and okay. Tony had... Uh... Okay. Although the indictment specified skimming or secret, secretly removing $2 million from gambling proceeds before taxes were paid on it, federal law enforcement officials have estimated that many times that amount were siphoned from the casinos during the ownership of Alan R. Glick of San Diego. And it had to have been more than that. Because oh, yeah. they were saying 300000 I, I was told to figure 300000 a month. And I don't know. I think it came from Battle of Las Vegas, Dennis Griffin's, which was mainly set in the 70s that he was talking about. Um, but it could have changed and fluctuated through time. But still, 300000 a month. You're talking about 2.6 million, 2. Point, roughly 3 million I think a it year. Was more than that. I think it was more than that. I really do. Well, they did it for how many years? 15 years? Well, not only that. Um, according to sources, they said that uh, the money was brought to uh, Left of the Rosie Left of the Left of the <laughs> Lefty Rosenthal's house, and then it was all, you know, divided up to where it would go. So okay, so no, that that that's not that's not how it went. And I, the other I had, thing is, Rosenthal was not at the trial. Period. My understanding is Tallarico, Joseph Tallarico, was the mule. He was the courier. Went back and forth. The guy they who counted cleaned, the guy who got all the money, rounded it up, wasn't Lefty. It was a guy named Phil Ponto. But didn't they he bring it to his house? Didn't they bring it to his residence? No, they would have never taken it anywhere near him, Lefty. Okay. That's my understanding. That's what I've been told. And I, because I thought that I had that correct. Uh, and, and I had to change the, the script around on the Vegas mob tour just to make sure that everything is, uh, you know, accurate. So, David Adamovich, the great Throdini. How are you doing today, David? I'm glad to see you're tuning in again. <laughs> um, Sometimes it's uh sometimes it's fun to watch the show, you know. You never know what the hell we're going to talk about. We're always going to discuss the facts, argue the opinions, and of course learn something new because that's what we do. <laughs> that's what we do on this show. 
Uh, so let's get back to the the uh, money here. Glick was probably the key witness in the trial, testifying that he was intimidated into fronting for the crime figures. Glick was official owner of both casinos for more than four years, marked by adverse publicity until the state finally forced him into giving up his casino license. The prosecutor subscribed to Glick's description of his role during their opening and closing statements to the juries. Denied knowing of mob ties. <laughs> okay. Yes. I no well, idea. They might no as well idea. put it out there out front. <laughs> And no idea. Um, um, let me take a few comments before we get into this. Marquette Gloves, Rosie Leftenthal was one of my idols growing up. Wow. I mean, we all have, you know, idols. Some people idolize lefties. Some would idolize, you know, Superman. Some He's making fun of my mistake. <laughs> Rosie Leftenthal. <laughs> was, did you say Rosie? Yeah, by mistake, I got tongue tied. <laughs> uh, Roll Tide was the outfit ever involved with the Desert Inn. So, from my understanding, I don't want to say it was never involved, but here's what I understand the um, Wilbur Clark was trying to build that casino. It would have been the fourth resort on the strip. It, uh, in 1948, um, after World War II, Mo Dalitz was honorably discharged from the, uh, uh, from the Army. And uh, as a second lieutenant, first lieutenant, sorry, first lieutenant, came to Vegas and found the, the Wilbur Clark struggling with the casino, just like Bugsy had done to Billy Wilkerson. But Mo went to the Cleveland mob, and that's where he got the loan to finish up the money to open up the Desert Inn. So the money came from Cleveland that opened up the Desert Inn. And Mo it Daly was probably, it was it. probably okay by Jimmy Hoffa himself. I, I, I would. I don't know the exact source. I know it was Cleveland, though, that got it. If it came through a Teamsters pension fund loan, I don't know. Uh, that I, I'm, I, I'm not 100% sure of, and I don't want to say either way. Uh, but I do believe that Wilbur Clark was the front man. Mo was the real boss behind the scenes, pulled all the strings, and probably ran it until uh, he died, which would have been 1987. And by then, everything was, you know, starting to sort itself out mobbed up podcast nice to see you um uh kissy cat wasn't a hotel royale wasn't a hotel royale busted by the dea for money laund money laundering through the casino cage hotel royale i don't know there's a, ro a royal out there on the strip right now but that's the only one that i i know of there was Things the royal <laughs> That was a little different. Anyway, uh, so I hope that answered that uh, that question. Uh, the, reason, the reason I said Jimmy Hoff, the reason I said Jimmy Hoffa, Adam, is because yeah. that 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 soundbite from Joey Lombardo talking to Morris Shanker. Yes, he said, "No, I didn't have anything to do with you guys. My deal was with Jimmy Hoffa." So if we're going back a little bit further to Cleveland, yes, it would have been Detroit. Jimmy Hoffa. And Shanker was Cleveland, correct? No, or he not? was, uh, more Shanker was St. Louis. St. Louis, okay. Uh, Benedict Mastriani, don't forget this weekend, Tony Accardo's great grandsons, Nikki and Joey, are playing in the NFL playoffs. One of them is going to win Defensive Player of the Year. Wow. See, there's some athletes uh, right there that uh, have a little bit of um, Chicago uh, history. We might say as Joey one line. Time for you're breaking up, Red. What did you just say? And Red's froze with a funny I'm expression. <laughs> you're back. Your picture's breaking up. Go ahead. Yeah, you were you were getting fuzzy there. You get your connection's a little slow. What did you say? As Joey Lombardo, as Joey Lombardo said to me once we can't be responsible for who our parents slept with yeah in other words we I guess can't that... be responsible for our lineage or our parents no 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 of course not no nobody could have that held against them matter of fact i don't even know if i should say this but the other day i had a spilatro take uh one of my tours 
I and, mentioned um, that, I mentioned that during my Monday broadcast. Re, re, related, hundred percent. I, I still was like, hey, and she was she was cool about the whole thing, you know. And she was just like, mm. I asked her. I said, do you have a? Is this a? You know, yeah. So anyway, but she's not like she wasn't like put off by it or anything. No. So. I'm sure other people have asked her about it before. Oh, <laughs> come on. Yeah, that's got to. And she, she grew up in Vegas. I mean, it's she, not like a name like Smith or Jones. <laughs> no. Come on. Anyway. Um, okay. So, uh, Jeffrey Bernard, Red, thank you for your remark earlier today about the coffee cup. Thanks. Uh, earlier about the coffee cup. Thanks. You're number one. You're number one, Red. Yes. He's, he, he's one of the several people. That asked for a cup with your name on it or your face on it. And I told him, I said, Adam was talking about, Adam was talking about at one time having his face and my face in the same mug. That's all I said. Uh, uh, Julian, do you know anything about the, anything about the Las Vegas jail siege? I do not. And it's funny that I, I, I don't, that that doesn't ring any kind of bell in my head because for the last year, uh, we've been working diligently on putting together a new tour, and it's the Vegas Crime Tour. And would you believe that I got to do the first, very, very first crime tour uh, this last week? Two prescribers were in town. One's from Florida. The other's in from Texas at the same time and said, we want to get together and go do something, which we did. We did go do something. Um, what we did is we went and uh, we... Uh, hung out and had some Italian beefs over at Windy City Beefs and uh, Pizza, and uh, and then we did the crime tour. And they, they thought it was that? Good. Hey everybody, we just finished our very first Vegas crime tour. I'm Scott H. and I got Sonny Zaro with me. What did you guys think of this tour? I'm just worried about you driving. <laughs> <laughs> what was your favorite part? Favorite part? Wow. See. Don't give too much away because this is uh... okay. So uh, Adam hits on all the major crimes in this city. If it happened here, Adam covers it both in video and his excellent content knowledge of the uh, subject matter, and you get to see where all this stuff actually happened. But just say we'll drop a few names here. We got Michael Jackson. Uh, John Wayne Gacy, the famous Mandalay Bay uh, uh, sniper incident. Uh, this is a crime tour, people. You're going to hear about and see crime scenes. Absolutely what he said. <laughs> He's with him. <laughs> We're all together. Hey, guys, Come get out now. here. Do the, do the Vegas crime tour. Hey, do it. I, hey, growing up in Chicago, watching all the crime they got there and stuff, and then coming here and seeing this, definitely worth it. Coming to. You've got to take this tour. You come awesome. to Vegas, you got to come and take the tour. Thanks for going on the tour, guys. Hey, Thank, thank you, Adam. We'll see you soon. Prescribe. Wow. So uh, that was pretty cool. And Scott H., Sonny Zaro, thanks for doing the tour and uh, thanks for coming on and, and giving me an honest opinion, really listening to the whole uh, presentation and uh, the the experience. Uh, Adam worked very hard on that tour. Very hard on the tour. Yeah, Red listened to me work on that thing day after day after day. I went, oh, Red, look what I just found out. Oh, Red, look at this. Oh, Red, look at this. Yeah, that went on for literally months. So, um, yes. So, even Adam even interviews the tiger that ripped Roy's arm off. Hey, ooh, Van Pastor man. Um, the tiger that ripped Roy's arm off was... Sigmund Roy. No, Siegfried and Roy. It's, um, hold on. Montecor. Montecor is the tiger's name. Man, there's some information <laughs> sitting around in my head. Why would I even have that in there? Um, <clears throat> yeah, hey, guys, hit the like button. Uh, seriously, only 49 likes right now. Be sure to hit the like button if you're just coming in. Uh, Bob Custer. Adam, does your tour stop for a beer at the dive bar? Uh, the dive bar was Frank Collada's My Place. The bartender Utopia is a trip. So, no, we don't, uh, Bob Custer. We we do on the mob tour go past where the upper crust was by the dive bar. Uh, we point that out. The uh, 
if we ever put a dive bar tour together, I don't even know if we'd go to the dive bar. We'd probably go to Champagne's, Dino's, Atomic Liquors, Double uh, Double Door. You know, that, that's what we would do. Um, dive bar is, is neat, but it's, it's dive bar. It's not a lot of history. I'd like to see something with a lot of history. Uh, it, it didn't tear his arm off. It bit him in the neck. That's right, Don. Uh, they said they was trying to carry him off stage and uh, because Roy had slipped and was hurt. The truth of it was... The night before they were partying, they had a big birthday party celebration. I think it was Siegfried's birthday and uh, might have been Roy's. I don't recall, but it was one of the two. And they were drinking a lot. And uh, the Tigers, they're used to the smell, the alcohol on them. And when Roy went to correct the Tiger, and because normally you give them a good whap, okay, but PETA and all these other organizations, eh, you got to kind of, you know, during the show, be careful as to how strongly you correct and i guess it didn't correct strongly enough that the tiger didn't take him seriously enough you know so well most of the time with a tiger or a lion a cat a big cat if you snap the whip and just crack it near them they jump because when you're yeah. training you actually hit them with it <laughs> sure so sure just a bull whip it it's gonna it's gonna crack make, it make them good. enough to till i'll listen <laughs> it's gonna get your attention <laughs> Do you know about Sunrise Manor? I live on Hollywood and Bonanza. No, Julian, I do not know about Sunrise Manor. Um, it sounds familiar, like I may have heard a story about something called Sunrise Manor. No, I'm not sure what you're uh, what you're referring to. Uh, <clears throat> it was Royal Las Vegas. Back to the Royal Kissy Cat. Busted 1982. Funding drugs. Yeah, I don't know if does the is Royal Las Vegas. Excuse me, Royal Las Vegas. I don't even think exists. Uh, any longer, but that, uh, yeah, Julie M, it is a fun tour. Really. It, uh, it is, um, a mob bar tour in Vegas would be epic. Bob Custer. <laughs> yeah, no, not happening. <laughs> just not happening. I we mean, it's out with 12 locations and only made to six. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Uh, yeah, Sonny Zaro, Don C. The Tiger said, uh, thought Roy was in trouble. So the Tiger said, here, hide in my stomach. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's... Tiger said, you talking to me? Huh? You talking to me? <laughs> That's exactly what the Tiger. Oh, man. Nah, Slaps out there, Carmine man. Oh, please. <laughs> the Tiger. Oh, what was that Ralphie May line? The Tiger, Tiger got to him and said, Tiger was like, eh, it's great. <laughs> like Tony the Tiger? In a, yes. Anyway. The old commercials. So the... Oh, gosh. Does Atomic Liquor still have Frank Sinatra's chair? Kissy Cat, I don't know. I don't... If there was a Frank Sinatra's chair, if there is inside Atomic Liquors, I would think it's still there. Um, that's That would be something that they wouldn't get rid of. So I am not anything. Uh, anything about Joey Cozumano? No, Julian, I'm sorry. Um, but we've taken some, some, let me go through a couple more here. Um, Rocco Roberto, welcome in, man. Never saw your name before. It's nice to have you with us. Joseph Collada, Red, did Paul Moore ever work for you at the bookstore? No. No, doesn't ring a bell at all? No, it would. Okay. Um. Uh, the only tiger I would trust was the dog on the Brady Bunch. <laughs> uh, Rick, yeah, lots of fun, Adam, getting busted DUI with a bunch of drunks in the bus. Exactly. No, I've 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 thrown this I've thrown this idea to my partner. Hey, let's do a dive bar tour. No, it's just there's too much liability, man. You take people around and you take them to six bars and they have a drink or two at each bar. And then you bring them back somewhere and you drop them off. You go, oh, we're going to drop you off at the pepper mill now. And then 30 minutes later, they get in their car and they go kill four people in an accident. Oh, yeah. Who got these guys all liquored up? Oh, that Adam did. I he saw, took them around. I, I, saw the, I saw the traffic on your uh, Vegas specialty tour. Oh, dash did, cam. You, did, did you see that? Yeah. I'm, I swear to God, we almost got killed. If... I pay attention. I swear to and God. That was broad daylight. That was broad daylight. 
when I saw a lady get get crushed, the other day she died. I saw it happen. I, it wasn't, it was blocked in front of me. I heard it. Boom. When I went, oh, this isn't good. I got up there. I went, oh, that's not. Same thing. You never, in Vegas, you never go into the intersection first. Light turns green. You sit there. You look to your left. You look to your right for oncoming going the wrong way. Look to your left again. And then you go. Because they fly through the light three seconds after it turns green. <laughs> Somebody will come through 50 miles an hour. It's crazy all the time. Anyway, let's get back to the article. Um, so we get this this part done. Although he reportedly went to school with one of Ballesteri's sons, Glick testified he did not know the criminal standing of Frank Ballesteri in 1974 when Teamsters pension fund officials sent Glick to see him about arranging financing to buy out Chicagoan Dilbert W. Coleman. Coleman was the controlling stockholder of Recreon, Recreon Inc., owner of right. the Stardust in Fremont. They were the original, and then the Argent bought it from Recryon. Argent was another corporation. Got it. Glick's successors at the Stardust in Fremont, Alan D. Sachs and Herbert L. Tobman, were Al forced... Sachs. Al Sachs, great attorney. They were forced to sell out two years ago after Nevada authorities accused them of failing uh, to prevent further skimming. And for those of you that didn't turn tune in, those of you, are you here? Do you hear how I'm talking? For those yeah, of you guys, you guys. Oh my gosh. <laughs> for those of you who uh, didn't tune in from the beginning, this article's from the Los Angeles Times 1986. Um, El Dalugac is the. Uh, I, I want to hit one here, Adam. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Why did Why Red did wait so wait long? So can, we, long to can we hold that till the end of the till? Because that's a long. No, on my bro on my broadcast right after this one. We're gonna read on yours. Yes, and we can hold it to there. Start the question. Start it. We'll we'll bring it up, Midland. Not a problem. Um, yeah, because that that's a long explanation, and and I I kind of want to finish this article. I only have a few more paragraphs. So through the defendant's influence, Glick testified he obtained an initial sixty two million seven hundred and fifty thousand from the Teamsters Central States Pension Fund to buy out Coleman and the smaller stockholder of Recreon, uh, Recreon, sorry, formerly Parvin Dorman Co., the same pension fund which furnished most of the capital to build the Las Vegas Strip. Later, lent Glick's Argent Corporation about $25 million more to refurbish the Stardust. The 80-odd witnesses at the trial often were upstaged by secret, court-authorized recordings of conversations among some of the defendants and other persons who used code names in referring to themselves and Las Vegas public figures. Along the, with the recordings were projections on a large screen of notes kept by one defendant, Carl DeLuna, who uh, pleaded yeah. guilty during the trial. That's the guy who supposedly they find the notes in the house. And I got to go out there again. I'm going to keep records. <laughs> He's guilty. Okay. In the end, in the end, the jury accepted the prosecution's contention that all of these pieces added up to a mosaic of conspiracy and shared diversion of profits skimmed without payment of taxes. Ex what, did, he, did he get him on racketeering too? Or just conspiracy? Conspiracy and shared diversions of profits. That's racketeering. Okay. Isn't it? Well, not necessarily. It could be depending on the, the reputation of the individuals charged. Well, this is th this is this is the successor Sachs and Tobman. Okay. Right. Yes. Testified. Yeah, to buy the Coleman out. Okay, so uh, ex Teamsters chief testifies. Among the highlights of the trial was the testimony of former Teamsters president Roy L. Williams, who became the first person in such a position to testify that he took orders from and was paid off by a mafia chief. That person, the late Nick Sevilla, head of the Kansas City organized crime family, died in 1983 after being released from prison. In his closing argument, Helfrey told the jury that Williams' testimony brought home the tremendous influence and extent of the conspiracy these defendants exerted. Carl W. Thomas, former Las Vegas casino overseer, 
testified that he provided the expertise to skim money from the Stardust in Fremont, as well as the Hacienda and at Circus Circus under former owners. Charges in the, charges in the Stardust case were dropped against Thomas in return for his cooperation. However, now, Circus Circus was more shanker out of St. Louis. So Thomas, the former casino overseer, testified that he provided expert, the expertise to skim money from the Stardust in Fremont, as well as the Hacienda and at Circus Circus under former owners. Charges in the Stardust case were dropped against Thomas in return for his cooperation. However, he is serving a 15-year federal prison term imposed in 1983 mm -hmm. on related skimming case involving the Tropicana. So that Carl Thomas was tied in with everybody from Jay Sarno to the it Chicago. It was a web. It was a web. It was very difficult to put that case together. <laughs> Other major witnesses were several convicts turned informer. Among them, Aladina, Jimmy, Fradiano, Ken Ito, and Angelo Leonardo. Who was Angelo Leonardo? I heard the other two, Jimmy Fradiano and Ken Ito. Who's the other two? Or I the do other not know. I really don't. Angelo Leonardo? Okay. I don't know. He was another, uh, yeah, that was another uh, another one. All right, so what are we doing here? We have some more. Oh, man. Uh, looking at your uh, Sonny, you can't do that. I have some great stuff. Um, PWI, don't believe the crap JC Jerkoff has to say. Scat, I thought you were none. But you guys are all off to your own over there on the side. <laughs> I have no idea what is even going on in the side comments right now. They have Seriously. their own conversation going on. Seriously. <laughs> let's, let's do this then. Midland Power Wash. Red, why'd you wait so long to speak up about those murdered boys? It was very easy. I spoke up about it way before I told Talking the FBI. Talking about the Pete Peterson Schutzler murder. That's correct. I told the FBI. The FBI told me at that time, murder is a local offense. It has nothing to do with us. Just don't talk about it. Leave it alone or you get yourself killed. That's what I was told. Later on, I had a, um, a disagreement, major disagreement with the FBI, and I went to an ATF agent, and that's basically how I started up. I hope that answers but your you question. Know, but Red had told them long before, years Oh, before yeah, John Osborne went to court. In the second yeah. trial, John Osborne went to court, John Osborne, and he had notes, and he said... Yeah, he told me all about it way back when, in 1971. I knew we were going to learn something new here. Um, thank you, Outfit Boss. Angelo Leonardo was the underboss of the Cleveland family. Um, <laughs> uh, Ann Donnelly, brilliant. Great job reading, Adam, and fantastic nook. Red and you have lived an unreal life, and yet you remain humble and a nice guy from Cork. A nice guy from Cork. He's from Cork, County Cork. He's from Ireland. Oh, and Donnelly. Oh, from Cork. Gotcha. Uh, gotcha. Tony Yaris <laughs> grew up in Old Town area, but stayed north of fifteen hundred North Wells. Tony, welcome in. Uh, it's nice to uh, nice to see you. So Angelo Leonardo was the underboss, according to Jason Diamond, of the Cleveland family. So thank you guys for answering that, uh, Jason and Outfit Boss. Uh, appreciate that. Uh, Bob Custer gets into it a little further. He was born in 1911 through all the way to 06, March 31st. He was a mobster who became the acting boss of the Cleveland crime family in the early 80s. Turned informant in 83, Pallet Jimmy the Weasel. Thanks, Bob Custer. Uh, appreciate that. So FBI stands for famous but ignorant. Guys, coming up with some nice acronyms here. <laughs> um, I'm not going to uh, touch it, but you're close. You're close. <laughs> no, I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm not. I'm not. You know what? I'm not going to go there. But there's a whole lot going on. You know that we're looking at saying, "What the hell?" Like, uh, they need to be. They need to be looked at. Our, our, our. Uh, yeah, our bureaus. 
Kissy Cat, Red, walking the Our Grand Canyon. Team. Wild. I bet you were hurting all over. Oh, you talked about the Grand Canyon this week earlier on Monday. Yes. Huh? And it, I, it, you know, I, in the book, I, I talk about how the cement floor damn near killed me. Well, believe me, mm -hmm. that walk down to the Grand Canyon damn near killed me, too. <laughs> I just laid in bed. Wow. That was uh, that was when you came out here to uh, to Vegas to bring those shoes back. It was on my return, trip. my return trip. Yeah, that was your yeah, your return trip. Uh, Jimmy Weasel, Jimmy the Weasel was a pivotal informant. Um, we should have to we should we should look into that and do do something. Uh, Jimmy the Weasel's not in New York though, isn't he? No, he was from Cleveland. Cleveland, he was Cleveland. So yeah. Maybe we should talk about his ties with the uh, Chicago and who he was. Do that as a. I know Frank Schweitz was uh, uh, dispatched to murder him, and he said he caught a glimpse of him. And as soon as he caught the glimpse, he went straight to the uh, payphone, called the FBI for help. <laughs> it's famous but incompetent, Tony Johnson said. Not ignorant. It's incompetent. Ah, oh, Don Ciccio, FBI, forever, forever bothering Italians, <laughs> FBI. <laughs> I don't never... know, they bother, they, they don't discriminate, they'll go after anybody. <laughs> Rick Charlton, female body investigator. <laughs> How about fumbling, bumbling investigation? MJP, thanks for that, appreciate it. Everybody needs a little uh, laughter, you know, every once in a while. Oh, you, if you can't laugh at the FBI, you can't laugh. <laughs> yeah, Van Pastor, man, we might have to look at this. Jimmy Jimmy turned after killing Danny Green. Ah, that was a car bombing. No, no, that, no it was uh, Bompanero, the bomb that he murdered. Jimmy the Weasel was a partner in the trucking business with Frank Laporte. There's a tie for Jimmy the Weasel to Chicago. That's Thanks, a fact. That's a fact. Yeah. He was inducted into the Los Angeles family, according to Jason Diamond. This guy got around, huh? Oh, yeah. Um, but they sent Bob, him out to the West Coast. Bob Custer. Uh, without informants, we would know far less about inside mob operations. Jimmy the Weasel operated in L.A. after leaving Cleveland in 1946. Yeah, Jimmy the Weasel had a lot of problems with Del Mar. At Del Mar? Yeah. Del Mar Racetrack? Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. Hmm. Speaking of the Schuster, Schuster peterson murder, Gomp, uh, we, when we lived in Evanston, I pulled out an old flower bin out of our kitchen cabinets while remodeling it. Behind it, were a bunch of newspaper clippings from the Peterson Schuessler murders. Super creepy. 1955. 1955. That'd be creepy as, that'd be creepy as all hell, man. It's Julian, the, the Crazy Horse 2 is burned down. Um, it just got demolished a week ago. And damn it, it was on my crime tour. It is on my crime tour. I still go, I got to go past it and show there. There's where it used to be. But I kind of wanted to show the building. Uh, anyway, uh, Everything gets changed around in that Vegas. That parking lot over there used to be. <laughs> Michael McDonald. I have an ankle monitor on my ankle. Well, it's better than having an ankle monitor on your neck. <laughs> I've got an ankle monitor on my ankle. Because of the FBI right damn now. Michael, I'm sorry to hear that, man. Um, you know, but don't do anything wrong. No. I hope you didn't. Maybe they're just monitoring you to monitor you. No, he had to go to court to get that, so he must have been let out for something. Homan, forever busting up in corporations. <laughs> I agree with that one, Homan. You got it. <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy the Weasel. I love it. Jimmy, I didn't think you guys could come up with this many. I really didn't. Jimmy the Weasel had his hand in many bookmaking operations. Uh. See, Jimmy took down Russell Buffalino, amongst others. Tony Bug, he was trying to approach, uh, encroach on Spilatro's bookmaking at the track, and it spilled over into a shakedown of someone who ran to the FBI. Ooh, that's not good. There was some guy by the name of Bompanero 
they call him his first i forgot his first name but they call him so and so the bop and huh? yeah and and friday auto murdered him and that really upset chicago michael uh, mcdonald just told you about his ankle bracelet tax evasion really that's what they're uh tax evasion so so why an ankle bracelet? He got right? house arrest. He got house arrest. <laughs> house arrest. Okay. Got to stay inside. But you know what? The good thing is, Michael, you can still watch my blog. Yes. <laughs> and somebody <laughs> helped me out here. You know, I mean, that's um, nice. The guy's, name, the guy's name that Fradiano murdered was okay. Frank. I can't pronounce it there. Bompensiro. Bompensiro. Right. There it is. Pomp and Cyrano. Okay. October 1905 till 77. February 10th, 77. That's when he gets Bomp. Bomp. That's what they called him. Frank Bomp. Milwaukee. He was born. He died in San Diego. He's got a cross too, huh? Major to cross. Well, he killed him in, he killed him in, um, in California. Friday I'm, looking at, I'm looking at his Western rackets. And I'm seeing names popping up like Jack Dradna, Johnny Roselli, Vegas, Modalis, Tony Spilatro, Bonanno, um, Joseph Bonanno. Then you got Jimmy the Weasel, Fratiano, um, both who he teamed up, commit mob saying she Well, he murdered. was an underboss. Cohen, Mickey Cohen. Uh, yeah, this guy This guy got, got around there. Um, Bompensiero. Thank you, Don Ciccio. Bump and Sierra. Thank you. Bump. Bump and Sierra. Okay. Kissy Cat said, stay away from there. It's in the hood. <laughs> Were you talking about the golden nugget, Kissy Cat? Yeah. Um, <laughs> there's an interesting interview of the weasel in France on YouTube, John McShane said. And we sh we're going to have to do this as a topic, Red. I think that uh, this would be a good topic. Jimmy Fradiano? His connection oh, to Chicago was with, was with Mickey Cohn. MJP, not to be confused with Frank the Bomb, Bomberito. Right. Is he screwing around? Is there really a Frank the Bomb, Bomberito? I have no idea. Bomberito, no really? I think that's in Cleveland. I think that's a Cleveland thing. Okay. Because Danny uh, Green was involved in a lot of bombings in Cleveland. Hold on, Bob Custer. Frank... Uh, did, Jimmy did not kill Frank. Red Tommy Ricciardi killed Frank. Frank the Bomb. Tommy Ricciardi killed him. No. All right, hold on. Let me just see if it says anything on his Wikipedia. Uh, death anywhere in here? Death. Quick to the side. They didn't have the okay to do the murder, and they did it. Thomas Ricciardi killed Bomb and. Su how do you say it again? Bomp and Sierra. Um, it's what it says on Wikipedia. Fra Fradiano told law enforcement that mob associate Tommy Ricciardi had killed uh, Bomp and Sierra. I think in he was return, there during the murder. He was there in during the murder. Membership into the Los Angeles family. When Ricciardi shot Bomp and Sierra, uh, Jack Los Cicero was waiting in the getaway car. According to Wikipedia, but you know what? This is a Wikipedia. You don't, you know, you never know. But it's very but, accurate. Somebody made a comment in here that you should read the Last Mafioso, and uh -huh. it's the first mob book I ever wrote or read. Bob Custer said, "Yeah, read the Last Mafioso." Uh, I got to check that out. It's the first mob book I ever read. I think it was put out in 1987. John McShay, Bomberito also had some interesting stuff on YouTube towards the end of his life, almost like a reality show. Bomberito is actually a real name. I thought they were screwing with me. Okay. So um, that that's correct, Adam. Okay. Testa the chicken. Testa the chicken? Man, the head of the Philly mob was killed by a bomb in Philly. Testa the chicken man. All you got to do is mention bombs, and that's it. <laughs> We're all over the United States now. 
Sean Parker, Gianni Russo. And with that, I think we've had a great time, Red. <laughs> We're going to do a little reading of Red's book uh, on his channel. The link's below down in the description if you guys want to uh, come along. We're on week nine of reading his book, and we're almost through this whole thing. Sorry we um, we weren't here last week and had to do a do-over, but uh, I had uh, – Red. well, first off, Red didn't have power. Uh, tornado. We had tornadoes. Not hurricanes, but tornadoes. Tornadoes knocked out power, so he was without power till 6 his time. And – uh, I went live. I was going to go live. I didn't even know where Red was, but I started to go live as you guys saw the intro. And I never did, I didn't get a chance to do a mic check with Red. And normally we do that. And when I went to check the mic, I looked and it, was, it wasn't working, which means I got to reboot. And so instead of just leaving the broadcast, rebooting and coming back in, and maybe some of you'd still be there, I clicked end and then there was no going back to it. So that's what happened. And uh, sorry about that, guys. But every once in a while, I don't think I was too bad for two years of broadcasts with Red. Two years. No. And I've done like 100 broadcasts. Yeah. So I probably missed more shows than you have <laughs> by accident. It's all good. I, I don't think only once. Anyway, see you over there in Red's channel. Red, it has been fun. It's been a good time. And I'll see you, see you soon. God bless, everybody. Thank you. Mob vlog. Mob vlog.